Greetings to you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, on this Sunday morning. It's always my pleasure to greet you on Sunday morning, but I look forward to joining with you in worship in this sanctuary. May it come soon. Here's a conversation that I suppose you've had with many people, or you've had with a few people many times. It begins this way. Well, I never thought I would see, and then you fill in the blank, and then the conversation goes on. Well, I never thought I would see, in this country, 22 million people filing for unemployment. Never thought I would see that. Or more locally, driving out to the church this morning, when I looked at the price of gas, the price of gas was $1.19. Well, I never thought I would see that price. Saw it earlier in life, but never thought I would see it again. Friends, we know this. We know that this statement, this experience, I never thought I would see happens. Never happens, right? It does. Never thought we would see a pandemic? Well, fair enough. But we've had other versions of this experience I never thought I would see. Friends, what scripture can guide us in a time like this? Or what theme? Here's a scripture that is in the category of never. The people never thought that this would happen. This scripture from 2 Kings chapter 25, beginning with verse 8. On the seventh day of the fifth month in the 19th year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Nebuzaradan, commander of the imperial guard, an official of the king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem. He set fire to the temple of the Lord, the royal palace, and all the houses of Jerusalem. They never thought they would see that. Every important building he burned down. The whole Babylonian army, under the commander of the Imperial Guard, broke down the walls around Jerusalem. Nebuzaradan, the commander of the Guard, carried into exile the people who remained in the city, along with the rest of the populace and those who had gone over to the king of Babylon. But the commander left behind some of the poorest people of the land to work the vineyards and the fields. And a few verses later, in 21, the latter part of verse 21, this summary statement. So Judah went into captivity away from her land. Friends, I want to speak about exile this morning. Well, for the southern kingdom of Judah, they never thought that this would happen. This matter of exile. Now, it was practiced politically by countries. That was not uncommon. Where the powers would conquer and kill and deport people. It already had happened in 722 B.C. to the northern kingdom, and that's recorded in 2 Kings 17. But now in 2 Kings 25, we read about what they never thought would happen, and rightly so, because of what they perceived to be God's everlasting faithfulness to them. The destruction of Jerusalem in 587 B.C. And it became for them the defining event, and they had to think through again, what does this mean? This apparent God's abandonment, or judgment, or hard matter for them. How about for us? Exile. Let us think briefly this morning about exile as metaphor. Now, we should not think about an easy or quick one-to-one -one association between 2 Kings 25 and what we are experiencing today. But yet, on the other hand, let us hear it or consider it and let it illuminate our thinking and our journey and let it offer some suggestions. Two general considerations with respect to exile. One is the whole matter of lament. They did, and we do. We grieve for what was, now is, and never shall be, right? I never thought I would see this take place, and I never thought I would see that this would be gone. And it's hard, and we grieve, 
in Louis Le Mans. To this day, the Jews, and even this summer in July, will commemorate or celebrate the 9th of Av, their Jewish month, A.V. But what's relevant about the month of Av, the ninth day, is this, that to this day, they commemorate and celebrate and remember the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. And what they've done since then is that they've had it ex added extraordinarily powerful, painful events and losses that they never thought that they would see or experience. And again, this summer, they will remember those days. Well, sure. Many of them will remember not only the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple, in more contemporary times, not many decades ago, they will remember the Holocaust. Friends, what scripture serves at a time like this? Well, there's scripture that came out of exile, Isaiah chapter 40 and beyond, Jeremiah and Lamentations, particularly Lamentations, a book of no, no, no hope, no rest, no resting place, no one to comfort, no hope, Lamentations. To lament is not to express doubt or lack of faith, but to be honest about life, how it really is. Not many weeks ago, we couldn't have imagined that life would be like this. But here we are, and we lament. Friends, I think there are two risks. Well, there are more, but especially so at a time like this for us as Christians. One, that we remain in endless despair, that we live without hope, without any encouragement or love or care from family or friends or from the church. May it not be so, and may your despair not be ceaseless. Secondly, the second risk is this, that we have amnesia, that we forget. In all days past and today, in all days future, God is with us. May we remember that. Friends, I said there are two matters that come out of exile. One is to lament, properly and fairly so, and secondly, to hear proclamation. Hear this proclamation from Lamentations, this extraordinary writing that comes out of the exile out of many no's comes this text. Lamentations chapter 3, beginning in verse 21. Yet this I call to mind, remembering, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. What gives hope? It isn't that circumstances have changed. It's that God is remembered. Because of God's great love, we are not consumed. The text continues, For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. May it be so. May we be a people who tell these stories, Well, I never thought this would happen. Fair enough. That we are also a people who not only tell those stories, but who proclaim we are people of yet. Yet we will trust in God. Therefore, we will not lose hope. and We will give gratitude and praise to God because it's always been true, and it's true yet on this day, because God's love for us never ends. Amen. Let us pray. Praise be to you, O God, for your love to us in Jesus Christ. We never thought that we would worship in this way or that we would experience life in the ways that are being experienced. For some, it's a great inconvenience. For others in our church, it's an extraordinary adjustment, a fearful time, a time of great loss, wondering when better will come. Lord, for all in the congregation, may you love them dearly and be with them. May all of us keep faith in Jesus Christ. 
and perseverance. And may we love and care and support and encourage one another in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, we pray. Amen. Friends in Jesus Christ, receive this benediction. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our lives in Jesus Christ, our Lord, today and forevermore. Amen.